Hello everyone, welcome back to ByteVigor channel. Today, we will explore the Mediator Design Pattern, a widely used behavioral design pattern in software development. This pattern helps reduce the complexity of communication between objects and promotes decoupling. Imagine you are a class teacher who needs to communicate with each student to understand their learning progress and issues. Directly communicating with each student can be time-consuming and complicated. So, you assign a class monitor to collect information from each student and relay it to you. The class monitor acts as a mediator, simplifying communication between you and the students. In simple terms, the mediator pattern introduces a third-party object, called the mediator, to control the interaction between two or more objects, called colleagues. This reduces the coupling between classes as they no longer need to know each other's implementation details. According to Wikipedia, the mediator pattern defines an object that encapsulates how a set of objects interact. This pattern is considered a behavioral pattern because it can change the program's running behavior. The difference between the mediator pattern and the proxy pattern is that the mediator pattern focuses on simplifying communication between objects by managing and coordinating their interactions through a mediator. The proxy pattern, on the other hand, controls access to an object often adding extra functionality like access control or lazy loading. In other words, the mediator pattern is used for coordinating communication, while the proxy pattern is used for controlling access. To better understand this pattern, let's implement a simple chatroom program in Java using the mediator pattern. First, we define an abstract mediator interface, chat mediator, that includes methods for sending messages and adding users. Next, we define a concrete mediator class, ChatMediatorImpl, that implements the ChatMediator interface and manages a group of users. The SendMessage method sends messages to all users, and the AddUser method adds users to the chat room. Then, we define an abstract user class that includes methods for sending messages and receiving messages. After that, we define a concrete user class, UserImpl, that implements the abstract methods send and receive from the user class. Finally, let's look at the client code. In this example, we first create an instance of chat mediator impl, then create several users and add them to the chat room. Whenever a user sends a message, other users receive it. In the code, chat mediator impl manages the users and handles message transmission. Each user sends messages using the send method and chatMediatorImpl forwards the message to other users, who receive it through the receive method. As you can see, the mediator pattern simplifies communication between objects by introducing a mediator. Objects no longer reference each other directly, but communicate through the mediator. This significantly reduces coupling between objects, making the system easier to maintain and extend. So when should you use the mediator pattern? When you want to reduce complex dependencies between objects and promote decoupling, you can use the mediator pattern. It simplifies communication and interaction between objects, making the system structure clearer and more maintainable. Finally, let's summarize today's lesson. The mediator design pattern introduces a mediator object to reduce complex communication and dependencies between objects, making the system easier to maintain and extend. In actual development, the mediator pattern can help us build more flexible and loosely coupled systems, improving code maintainability. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the Byte Vigor channel so you won't miss more exciting content. See you in the next video.